Dawn along the sand-covered riverbanks 70 million years ago, a time when dinosaurs have evolved some of their most impressive forms, brought on by the constant battle between predators and prey. Walking across the sands to the river is a trio of Zuckchengus tyrannus, 10 meter long apex predators. These carnivores stride through their territory with unmatched confidence. They have come down to the river to drink, and potentially spot a meal. But as they lap up the water, they spot the last thing they want to see. A figure is walking through the river, its bulk parting the water in front of it, its powerful limbs drawing itself forward as if it were moving through air. It is a hadrosaur of some kind, and it is all alone. At first, the three carnivores can't believe their luck. Prey is literally walking right at them. However, when the creature pulls itself out of the water, all is revealed. Before them stands Shangtongasaurus, the largest hadrosaur of all time. The monster herbivore rises out of the river, and the predators suddenly lose their confidence. On all fours, this male is six meters tall and 15 meters long. He is also four times as heavy as the predators that cautiously back out of the path of the enormous herbivore. The colossal male barely turns his head to look at the three carnivores, as they are no threat to him, and nothing stands in the way of a Shangtongasaurus on the move. He leaves the predators behind without a second thought. He is searching for particular plant species to feed on. Though hadrosaurs are not selective feeders, his species is so large, he needs a lot of different types of food to get all the nutrients his body needs, and so on occasion, he needs to be picky. There are other ways to address this problem, however, and he heads to a place he has used in the past. Being so big, his stride is long, and he arrives at the area in short order, but finds a herd of Cynoceratops. These two-ton Ceratopsians are well armed with spines and head crests, and can be dangerous when threatened. For the Shangtungasaurus, however, there is no issue. He boldly stomps forward, and the armored herbivores part before him. He shows no signs of aggression, nor makes any noise. The Cynoceratops simply know that if they don't move, the massive herbivore will simply push them out of the way. It doesn't take long for the male to find what he's looking for. In fact, there is a reason both species have come to this particular part of the forest. A mineral lick, full of salts and other essential minerals that he needs. Though he has to lie down on his stomach in order to reach, he now only has to lick the exposed ground. This will also assist his gut to combat some of the poisons that a few of the plants have. Many other herbivores will visit these licks, and are often essential to the animal's survival. Even lying down, the Shangtungasaurus towers over the Cynoceratops, but they actually like having him around. His presence alone will make some predators think twice before attacking their herd. So together, they enjoy the mineral lick, feeling a little bit safer in each other's company. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a truly massive hadrosaur, Shangtongasaurus. First discovered in 1973 in the Shangdong Peninsula of China, where the remains of five individuals of varying ages were located in a bone bed. It lived between 77 and 70 million years ago in the late Cretaceous period, and is the largest member of the hadrosaur family. Although the upper estimates of some Edmontosaurus specimens might have come pretty close to it. The largest specimen could have been 15 meters long and weighed 13 tons, possibly getting up to 15 tons. Standing on all fours, Shangtongasaurus would have been up to 7 meters tall, and it also could have reared up on its hind legs to run or simply reach high foliage, getting even taller. This makes it the largest non-sauropod dinosaur, far larger than even T. rex or Spinosaurus. Its beak was toothless, 
but its jaws contained over 1,500 teeth. These batteries were used to grind down vegetation into a mush, making the plants it ate much easier to digest. There is also a large hole near the nostrils, which may have been covered in a type of loose skin that could have been used to make loud noises and complex vocalizations. Hadrosaurs as a group were some of the most successful dinosaurs to have lived. The success was in part driven by them being generalist herbivores that could eat just about any food. They also had large amounts of eggs, which would have kept their population high. Many got quite large, with lengths of 7 to 8 meters being common, while also still being able to run by rearing up on their hind legs, so any predators they didn't outsize would still have a hard time hunting them down. Shane Tungasaurus may be pushing the boundaries of hadrosaur size limits. Even if it could run bipedally, adults were so large they were effectively immune from attack. If the bone bed they were found in is anything to go by, they likely lived in herds, with older members protecting their young. Apart from predators, Shang Tungasaurus may have become large to take advantage of a niche that wasn't being filled. It may have been the region's high browser, filling a similar role that elephants do today. It shared its environment with dinosaur species such as Zuckchenga tyrannus, Cynoceratops, Zuckchenga doceratops, and Icetichiroceratops. It's difficult for us to comprehend just how large this animal was. It's almost double the size of some of the other large hadrosaurs, and 2.5 times the weight of an African bull elephant. And yet it used the same body plan as its relatives, and most likely lived very similarly. As I said before, it likely pushed the limits of how big non-sauropod dinosaurs could get. Unfortunately, it is barely known. Which is a shame, as usually getting the biggest of all time title usually draws a lot of attention. But what do you think of Shang Tungasaurus? Do you think any predator could have taken it down? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to cover in a future episode? And until then, thank you for watching.